All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. Everything's a little strange here today as it is, I'm sure, wherever you are tuning in from around the world or will be watching this. But I'm delighted to be joined by Stacey Kopas, who is in Sydney, Australia today. How are you doing, Sydney? How are you doing, Sydney? How are you doing, uh, Stacey? I'm fantastic. Um, from the future for you. Yeah, yeah. Stacey's coming. So uh, Stacey's going to tell us what's going to happen to us in the next 24 hours or so. <laughs> but from the looks of things, everything is cool, so we're good. Um, so, um, yeah, business as usual. So Stacey is the author of the book, How to Be Resilient. She's an international keynote speaker and facilitator, has worked with major big companies, you know, like Telstra, uh, which is a big telecommunications uh, company in in Australia and other companies like that. And and Stacy is uniquely positioned to talk about resilience because you um you at the age of twelve was unfortunate to end up a a um what's it a quadriplegic, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And so what brought about uh, what what uh, drove you to write the book how to be resilient because and, and obviously you ha- you're as i said you're uniquely positioned to write something like this because you had to overcome something that most of us can't imagine and, and certainly at such an early age as well. Yeah, it was it was something that um the, the word resilience is actually it's quite interesting for me because it was a word that i'd actually never used myself. Um, and it was actually a mentor that had put the word resilience to my story and felt that that was that was probably the most logical thing that I could actually teach from being able to reverse engineer my story um, and my 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 yeah how I overcome the adversity of becoming a quadriplegic at 12 years old. I actually broke my neck and drowned in a relative's backyard swimming pool, and you know, that was you know I felt like my life was over in that moment and prior to that I was I was an athlete I you know played softball I played soccer I was a rep runner of every distance from 100 meters to the cross country academically doing brilliantly um so you know in that moment I really felt like my life was over and you know spent um you know the years that followed in a you know in a very dark um in a very dark place but Mm -hmm. hid that hid that from everybody um but over time I ended up being able to turn that around and um I really didn't think much of my story on my journey, I just saw it as I was getting on with life and there was nothing special about me. But throughout the years, everyone would always say, you know, Stace, how did you become so positive and optimistic and motivated and ambitious, even though you've had so many things go wrong? Um, And it wasn't until I was in my 30s that I, you know, began to realise that there were some value in my life experience and there was an opportunity for me to be able to teach people how to turn, you know, their adversity into an asset and, and how to find the opportunities in um, adversity and change. So um, it, it kind of made sense to, you know, once you start telling the same story over and over again, um, it makes sense to try and put it into a book. Um, so I did that and um, that was that was five years ago. Um, this year and it's just it's, it's basically a you know it's it's a how-to guide it's exactly what it says on the can it's how to be yes. resilient um, and it's just breaking down some key principles that I you know I use myself I uh, still use today um, but also it's it's a workbook as well so it's you know it's a bit of a self-coaching guide um, and just guides you through exercises on how to actually implement each of those principles that I mm-hmm. outline in the book. So, uh, so it's it's interesting, and the the, the timing is 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 uh, fortuitous in many ways because here we are in the beginnings or middle or who knows where we are in this crisis that has uh, obviously impacted the whole world, and people are in very new situations, particularly in business now. There's a lot of people are being sent home; they're working from home for the first time. You know, the salespeople who and salespeople, there's a lot of our audience out there now wondering. You know, what am I going to do? Is this the end of my year? Or am I not? Going? So uh, this message about resilience, and you say uh, the blueprint for getting results when things don't go to plan, right? And let's face it, this isn't things aren't going to plan for anyone right now. Um, so what is the what's the first step in kind of um, stepping back from maybe feeling overwhelmed or that there's nothing you can do about it? What's the first step in getting yourself positioned to start uh, overcoming? Yeah, look, the, the starting point is something that is, it's, it's, I find it's all about taking personal responsibility for a situation. Um, you know, we have to take ownership 
of our situation for the experience that we have. Um, because the reality is, is that no one's actually going to come and save us. No one's going to fix anything for us. We need to take ownership for that. Um, it's often, it's, it, it's, it, it, it sounds quite simple, but it's often quite difficult because when things don't go to plan, there's a bit of a default reaction that we have is to look for something or someone to blame. Um, and I refer to the, that as sort of people often have blamatitis or that they're excusiologists. So it's, it's, it's about just taking that ownership and going, look, I'm responsible for the experience that I have right now um, and, and starting from that point. Um, and, and, and also in the context of that, I like to actually use gratitude. So even though it sounds, you know, way out right now with the, you know, with way mm-hmm. what the world is and the challenges people are facing, I find gratitude is is amazing opportunity to ground us in the moment, because if we get too hung up on what's already gone, then you know there's a there's a tendency to get a little bit depressed about a situation, and if sure. we start to, we start to speculate and get too far ahead, then that creates anxiety. So if we can use a grounding statement of gratitude, and I use thank you for the opportunity to be who I am, where I am, with what I have at this moment in time. And that just brings you right into the moment. And in the moment, if you are truly in the moment, you can't feel anxious and you can't feel depressed. So Mm -hmm. it just gets you grounded and it gets you into that moment to be able to go, okay, this is what I do from here. I can't change what's happened. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. All I control right now is what I think, what I feel, and what I'm going to do next. Yeah, and, and I love that because I, I love this whole concept of, of accountability, uh, about taking accountability for your own life and your own circumstances. And, and because I think it's a very liberating thing. And I tell you, I mean, personally, I know myself, like uh, for my own life journey, it is probably the most liberating thing. And this is what I try to share with other people, that it sounds counterintuitive, but when you just suddenly say, okay, I am responsible for everything that's happened to me. You know, maybe I, maybe I didn't do it to myself, but I was there. I put myself in the position or I continue to put myself in that position or whatever it is. And that actually far from being overwhelmed, it's very, very liberating. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And it, it, it also just frees up your energy because yeah. if, you're in a, if you're in a situation of blame, all you're doing is you're creating a negative energy and a negative attachment to something external to yourself. Um, you're giving away your personal power and you're giving away control of the situation. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. And the other part there, um, you know, what you mentioned about gratitude, I think that's incredibly important as well. And again, I think that's a very, that's, that's a huge mind door. switch. Um, that's a huge mind switch that happens when you start to, I mean, I, I started that a while back myself where I have a, I have a morning gratitude because I'm a morning person, to be honest, <laughs> I'm much more of a late. So do you want to sometimes to get myself set up for the day? I have to go through my morning gratitude list. And again, and, and you start to, it's, it's very hard when you start to look at the things in your life to be grateful, a grateful that you should be grateful about or the gifts that you've been given. It's very, very hard to be negative after that. Yeah. You, you, you can't feel two opposing emotions in any given moment. So mm-hmm. if, Choose what to to feel, and that's gratitude. Sometimes it does sound, it does it does feel counterintuitive sometimes when it feels like the the world is falling down around us. To actually say, look, I'm grateful for that, but there are so many things. Like I I just I I have a I, I find I'm in a state of constant wonder of how amazing it is that we're even here, and all of the little things that happen around us in nature, and even with our technology and the people around us. It, you know, if you've got that sense of wonder. Um, I've, mm-hmm. I've heard it referred to as situational gratitude. So it's having in every That's moment being grateful for that. Um, it, it really does help to keep you focused. Yeah. So when you, so, okay, so accountability and gratitude are, are good steps to get yourself into the mind, right mindset. Uh, what, what's the next things that you need to do in, in order to actually take action and take control? Yeah, the next one I, I like to look at is I like to look at the language that we use in any given situation. Mm-hmm. Because the way we describe a situation is the way we experience it. So we can look at particularly, you know, if, if we're looking at in a sales situation, um, potentially we, you know, may have spent a lot of time putting together a pitch and working with a, you know, with a potential client to then have that rejected at the last minute. So you, in that moment, you could turn around and you could get really frustrated. You could beat yourself up. You could just go into this mode of, you know, oh, wow, look, all these things went wrong and, and, and focus on all of the negatives. Or you can turn around and go, you know, you presented you presented the best solution that you had for them, and actually in in that moment, just go, 
that was a really great opportunity to learn more about a potential mm-hmm. client. That was a great opportunity to be able to present some new ideas. It was a great opportunity to do all of these things. You know, this is, you know, could be the start of a new relationship, but it may not be right now. Yeah. So it's how we describe it. And I think one of the best word switches that I like is sometimes you can say, I have to do something. So it might be, look, oh, geez, I have to go and do another pitch or I have to go and make another 10 sales calls in the next mm-hmm. hour and feel that it's an obligation. Whereas if you flip that to go, I get to do this. Yes. You know, how awesome is it that I actually get to make 10 calls right now and I get to connect with 10 people. I get to learn about these people and I get to potentially be of service and solve their problems. Energetically, that just shifts so much. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think people, I, I do think people underestimate the power of their own words and, and what they say and how they phrase things. And I think it's a great exercise. And one thing I would encourage people is just spend the next while examining the words you use and just taking note of them because we do it so unconsciously a lot of the time. But just, I mean, to Stacey's point, like take a look at what you're saying and how you're describing things and try describing them differently and see if this and see if you see the energy change. But I think you have to become aware of it because we do it unconsciously. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's another what's another step that people can do in order to um, start the process of, of getting on track and getting in control? Yeah, one of the things that I find once you said that those things are very internal, they're things that we actually yeah. do ourselves. Um, when we start looking externally, then it's a matter of making sure that we've got the right support network around us. Um, so mm-hmm. it's making sure that we surround ourselves with people that are going to lift and energize and inspire us. I call them our cheerleaders. Um, and that we make sure we minimize our exposure to the people that are going to suck the life out of us, which are the black holes or the dream stealers or the energy vampires. Um, so we've got to make sure that, you know, we spend time with high quality people, um, that we minimize our exposure to negative um, energy. And that's just not people, that's um, everything we consume, whether it's food, whether it's what we watch, what we listen to, um, you know, all of those things. It's constantly checking in with the things that you do and the things that you surround yourself with and going, does this make me feel light and energized or does this make me feel negative and drained and constantly juggle that. So, you know, your support can be your informal supports, whether it's family and friends. Um, But I think in a professional sense, um, you know, surrounding yourself with, um, you know, positive positive peer group, um, but also making sure that you bring in great coaches and mentors. Um, And coaches and mentors have been absolutely crucial to how I've been able to evolve as a person and as a you know, as a, as a, as a professional as well, um, because they often see things in us before we see them ourselves. Um, they often believe in us more than we believe in ourselves. Um, and it's having that accountability again to someone external. We are really good at letting ourselves down, but we don't let others down. And, you know, my coach takes it to another level and he says, you know, we've got to have accountability to somebody. We deeply do not want to disappoint. So, (laughs) I find that that's, that's been a really big shift for me. So making sure that, again, you're, you're getting positive energy to fuel you through the challenging times. Yeah. And what I love about everything you've talked about, and here again, is these things, even from what we started at the beginning, is like being accountable, being your know, gratitude, and and now um, looking at your your inputs, right? The external inputs. Is, these are all things that you have 150% control over. This is not something that you... So you are the one who chooses. When you... Say when you get up in the morning, if you... And I said to these people all the time, is like, if you tune into the news, it doesn't matter what end of the political spectrum you sit in, right, whatever, um, the news isn't designed to inform anymore, it's designed to provoke. And if you allow that, you're going to find something that's in that news that's going to annoy you, right? So do you want to start off the day annoyed? And I always say, like, like here, we've got a virus, right? Yes, you will get news about that. Just like if there's a meteor headed towards your neighborhood, somebody's probably going to tell you. But the rest of the stuff you probably don't need to know about or you need or just put it aside. But I do think that the inputs you put and the people you surround yourself with. And let's face it, if you uh, if you uh, have a lot of people around you who are negative and like to complain, you've got to ask yourself, why is it you gravitate towards these people? 
Um, and again, that's your responsibility. And maybe you're the one, maybe they need to get away from you. But anyway, but the point is, these are all things that you've got complete control on. And I think the inputs are so important because I think people are bombarded from so many things, social media, everything like this, is that you have to be very careful and you have to make conscious choices about what you're consuming. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, we've got complete control over that. And as you touched on, it's especially what we consume first thing in the morning. You know, if you're reaching for your phone and you're scrolling Twitter and you're getting all of the negativity, then that's not a great foundation to start your day. Um, the news is something that I generally advise people to stay as far removed as possible. Mm -hmm. And as you said, if something's big, we're going to hear about it. And at the moment, I've sort of find, you know, obviously with the virus and stuff like that, I do probably sure. check in mainly on Twitter for a few carefully mm -hmm. curated sources um, to see, yeah. you know, because there's stuff we need to know. Um, but we don't need to be plugged into it 24 hours a day because yeah. all that's going to do is fuel fuel your anxiety and a sense of helplessness, and that's not going to be you know going to be useful for anybody. Yeah, no, I I absolutely agree, and I always say also to uh, and it's a good one for salespeople. If you're on your way to a sales call, or you've got one, you now you won't be on your way a lot. You'll be doing it virtually. Um, but if sometimes if you want to pump you up, find that person in your life who always puts you in a good place, who always pumps you up or whatever, and maybe reach out to them for a couple of minutes before you have this call and just get yourself pumped up, right? And have somebody, and as you said, the coach and mentor, I think is incredibly important. I, I say this often, like the first time I, my first executive level job, I hired a coach and the best things I ever did. It set me up so well for the future. And in fact, that coach um, helped me realize that I just didn't want to be at that level. I wanted to be at a level higher than it and helped me achieve that eventually. Um, but as I always say to people is, you know, we'll invest in our tennis coach or our golf coach or whatever coach or whatever. And we'll never invest in a professional coach that can help us with the thing that puts bread and butter on the table. Oh, it's the best investment we can make because it's the one that actually does have a very, very tangible ROI on it. Yeah. And we all need a third party, right? An independent third party to give us an un, you know, unbiased view. But somebody who's invested in our success, but is going to give us an unbiased view of what's happening. Absolutely. And I've said and referred to as our honesty barometers. So they will call yeah. us out on our on our staff if we mm -hmm. if we are not performing or we are sort of slipping into some bad habits or potentially making some excuses, they will call us out on it. And that's exactly what we need. Yeah. So um one more, what's one more piece of advice that you would give people before we finish? Uh, one more piece of advice. Um, I find that something that's really, really important is actually to enjoy what you do. Yeah. Is, is and this is something that we, we we just lose sight of is it's actually getting going about our daily life and looking for the fun in it and because so often as we get focused on you know these are the kpis these are the outcomes and it's also it's also i guess it's it's just the, the really tangible sort of stuff but if we can just make things fun then mm -hmm. that's what i find is so important is just enjoy the process and again a lot of that is a choice it's, it's, you know, we can wake up in the morning and go, are we going to have a great day or are we going to have a crap day? And so yeah. as I said, if someone's, someone's on their way to a, you know, a sales meeting or they're about to jump on a call, um, one of the things I find that really helps me and, and I enjoy and really helps me enjoy the process is music. So it's mm -hmm. finding, you know, those favorite tracks. It's having yeah. that bit of a, you know, a loud, a loud sing along or something like that. To me, I find, you know, singing along to something, um, it releases the same kind of endorphins as if I go and have a cardio workout. Um, so there's yeah. all these little things that we can do. Um, and then just, again, just enjoy the interactions with people, um, but also find things external to your work that, you know, you really love and schedule those the same that you would schedule your board meetings or things like that. Mm -hmm. I've worked with some CEOs that have sort of, you know, have sort of, um, you know, bemoaned that, geez, I'm not playing as much golf as I'd like to. And I'm like, but do yeah. you schedule it? And it's like, put yeah. it in your calendar as a non-negotiable as you would your board meeting or, you know, time with your family and stuff like that. So schedule enjoyment, but also look for enjoyment in the things we do every day. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with the scheduling stuff. That's why I'm fortunate. And I, I'm, I do martial arts and I'm glad because I have a schedule because I have, you know, the certain class I have to go to. If I didn't and I had to schedule time at the gym or something, 
probably would never do it. So uh, it's, um, I think it's a great, uh, it's a great piece of advice is schedule in the thing you at the end of the day, schedule into things that are important to you. And, you know, that kind of balance is important too. Yeah. All right. Well, listen then, Stacey, this has been fascinating. All of Stacey's information will be in her contributor bio below. So you'll be of all the links, but before we go, Stacey, tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I am the author of How to Be Resilient and the founder of the Academy of Resilience. And what I do most is I work with particularly leaders and I help them to shift the way they perceive and respond to change and adversity. And in the world we're in today with just yeah. how rapidly changing and increasingly uncertain it is, what I love to do is help people be prepared and proactive rather than panicked and paranoid. So it's <laughs> certainly um, it's certainly a really good time to be able to share some of these messages and to actually see that um, there's amazing possibility and amazing opportunity, even if the rest of the world is trying to tell you that everything is against us. Um, I'm really excited about the opportunities that are going to come from this. We've got great opportunities to be of service, to plant seeds, to mm -hmm. nurture relationships. Um, I, I like to, what I love to do is to help people see that in, in their own lives, in, in business and life itself. Yeah, listen, that's fantastic. And I agree with you. I think there's great opportunities that come out of this. I think people will learn new ways to work and to operate. And, and I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of positives going to come out of it. Well, listen, thank you very much, uh, Stacey, joining us from Sydney, the early morning in Sydney. Uh, my name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.